invite the second speaker of this session, uh, Professor Fernando Sanchez. Uh, professor Fernando Sanchez is Professor of Emergency and Critical Care Medicine at the University of Castellón, Spain, and is an intensive care specialist at the Adult Intensive Care Unit at the General University Hospital of Castellón, Spain. We will speak about sequential extracorporeal therapy in sepsis. Please, uh, Fernando. Thank you very much. I would like to join to thank you, Jafron, for organizing this ni nice meeting. Thank you very much. I'm moving to the presentation. My topic is sequential extracorporeal therapy in sepsis. And Starting from the beginning, imabsorption is an extracorporeal blood purification technique based on mesh separation by a solid agent. And this allows us to remove unwanted plasma solutes and under this attractive possibility, um, it has been proposed as a potential therapy in sepsis, uh, thinking about the, 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 the benefits of removing cytokines uh, from plasma, allowing uh, uh, some kind of immunomodulation that could be benefit for, for the patient. In the recent years, with the development of, of different devices, we, we are living a, a renewed interest in this therapy. But there's still a controversy uh, over the efficacy of these techniques. Um, and if we attend to the, to the evidence, uh, of the studies performed in this, in this subject. In, 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 uh, recently, there's an emerging concept that is the sequential extracorporeal therapy uh, for sepsis that is nothing else than personalizing the therapy, attending to a specific target that can be um, achieved with uh, different devices and in, in septic patients. The classical treatment uh, of sepsis uh, includes um, uh, the administration of uh, optimal uh, antibiotics, uh, followed by fluids and, and vasopressors. And in certain cases, um, it will be uh, a, a requirement as a surgical treatment for uh, optimal source control. And we need to know if there is a potential role of, uh, for hemoperfusion in, in this uh, setting. Running in parallel with these uh, therapeutic measures, uh, there are um, some mandatory diagnostic measures like um, complete uh, laboratory tests, in different imaging tests, uh, performing cultures to optimize the antibiotic treatment. And we need to know if there is um, uh, any biomarker, probably a single biomarker is impossible, but, but a panel of, of biomarkers that could guide and, and help us in performing this kind of therapies. We know the, the complex uh, sequence of events that follow the, the, the infection, the, and usually the, the um, immune response is uh, uh, is balanced between the pro and anti-inflammatory response, so it leads to uh, homeostasis and, and the recovery of, of the patient. But in certain cases, there, there is an excessive of um, either pro-inflammatory or the anti-inflammatory component of this uh, response, and we we can we can see three different uh, evolutions that define different phenotypes of, of patients. Uh, in some cases, uh, this excessive um, response, uh, pro-inflammatory response, uh, leads to fulminant uh, uh, multi-organ failure and death. And in other cases, uh, the patient rec uh, recovers, but uh, with a, per a persistent inflammatory or anti-inflammatory uh, uh, um, response. And so we have these four um, different phenotypes of, of patients that mm, might help us to define to which population we can mm, think about applying these therapies or not. Clearly, immunoperfusion is not for every patient, but we need to know 
to, to which concrete population we can, we can direct the, the therapy. And probably mm, the, the optimal population would be one of those that uh, there's no uh, a fulminant death, uh, but there is a, a mm, persistent inflammation or uh, uh, immunosuppression and catabolism syndrome, the so-called PICS, and uh, this population probably with a, 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 an early um, intervention would benefit most from these uh, therapies. In this line, um, immunomodulation has a, a, an important role for, for the therapy. But classically, uh, immunomodulation has consist on, on immunosuppression. But this will, will it, it could be harmful in, in several uh, uh, circumstances. So we need to know what is immuno immunomodulation in, in all these patients. And we have learned a lot about the compartmentalization of the immune response from uh, sterile insults. And here it, it emerges another uh, concept, uh, that is the, uh, the relationship between sepsis complexity, immunomodulation, and the compartmentalization of the immune response. It sounds attractive, as, as well as a bit naive, to imagine that uh, with one single intervention, we could remove uh, one concrete uh, molecule that will lead to uh, homeostasis. Uh, and the real thing is that in sepsis, we have so many mo molecules affected and so many lines that they are affected with this uh, process that mm, it's impossible to control with one single intervention or one single target. We have seen that depending of the, of the mm, site of infection, there, there is a different mm, response uh, attending to mm, coagulation, complement uh, activation, and inflammation. So we need to mm, distinguish which patients they are most benefit from this uh, therapy. Because in some times when there is a concordant state of inflammation between blood and the tissues, uh, immunosuppression could be of, of benefit for the patient. When there's a, a, a disconcordant uh, uh, state between the, these two compartments, probably the, the right actuation would be in the immunostimulation. In this sense, um, there's a very interesting uh, paper published many years ago uh, where uh, uh, immunosorption uh, achieves a reduction of cytokines uh, leading to a, a reduction of organ dis dysfunction and tissue injury and also a redirection of uh, immunocompetent cells uh, improving the bacterial clearance for, from the tissues. And Considering all of this, we can, we can imagine the four main targets of, of these therapies. We could remove directly uh, pathogens from blood, we could uh, remove um, PAMs and, and DAMs, or even activated cells, and finally cytokines and, and other uh, inflammatory mediators. There are several uh, devices available uh, right now for, um, for these, uh, these targets. Uh, most of them, they are um, non-selective um, devices. And we're going to have a quick, quick look uh, f uh, f from, from this one. Uh, about um, pol uh, polemics in B, uh, unfortunately, the studies have been, um, all of them, negative. Uh, in terms of um, improving survival. But perhaps as Dr. Ronco uh, highlighted in, in, in his previous lecture, the goal uh, should be redefined in, in this population until we know which population would benefit most from, this, from these therapies. And right now, uh, it's running a, a, a new Mm, a, a new study uh, with, uh, with polymixin, then we hope uh, uh, will help us to, to define this, this uh, therapy. But we have learned a lot uh, about these negative results. We know that the, patient, the, the population that will benefit most from removing 
uh, endotoxin from blood will be those with an endotoxin activity asset between 0.6 and 0.9. That, that would be a big step in, in, in the knowledge uh, of, of absorption. And a recent uh, meta-analysis suggests that polymixin B could be of interest because there could be an, an improvement in, in, um, in survival in, in patients in a specific population of, of different patients. Regarding cytosorb, uh, again, all the studies have, have been negative, um, including uh, uh, the, the, the absence of reduction of, of cytokines, but we have learned that probably the studies were conducted in a population with a low level of inflammation. Not everything with high level of cytokines uh, can be considered a, as a cytokine storm. We should distinguish, and it probably it will be useful, distinguish between hyperinflammation and cytokine storm. And many, many studies that have been conducted during the recent years had fallen in, 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 the same, in the same mistakes. Regarding the HA series, uh, we have learned that mm, the, there are different goals that they are measurable and, and they are of interest for, for the researching community. And we, ha we have seen that they are effective re uh, reducing cytokines and also uh, linked to this uh, effective reduction, there's an improvement in, in hemodynamics, uh, an improvement in organ dysfunction, and a reduction in ICU mortality and ICU stay. Here's another study uh, conducted in, in respiratory uh, patients, and again, there was a reduction in, in the duration of mechanical ventilation, shorter duration of renal replacement therapies, uh, less ICU stay and, and ICU mortality. And another um, study, this, this is very interesting because it's conducted in, in pediatrics population, and uh, also they achieve a reduction in, in, in severity in, in, in of organ dysfunction. Uh, currently, there's um, one study running. Uh, here they are the, the inclusion criteria, and we hope will have uh, good news from, from this study. Our experience with uh, HA series uh, is mm, mainly with abdominal sepsis. We have mm, very strict criteria to, to apply in this, this therapy, and we recently published a small case series. And, and our therapy is not defined by a, 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 a concrete number of sessions or, or, of imoperfusion. We got the therapy uh, by um, hemodynamical, uh, by the hemodynamical response to the treatment and uh, following the, the, uh, the decrease in IL-6 levels during the, the treatment. And we found that running in parallel with the decrease of, of uh, inflammation, there was a, a massive reduction of uh, vasopressor support and an improvement in, in organ dysfunction. We also found that uh, at least in our population there was a, a, a reduction in, in platelets, but this was uh, something transitory and there was a recovery just uh, 48 hours uh, after stopping the treatment. Just a few words about the, the possibility of um, removing directly pathogens from blood. Uh, about uh, the Sera filter uh, is able to remove different uh, pathogens uh, effectively, and also is able to remove some dams and cytokines. There are not not many um, publications available uh, about this, but in the real world setting, uh, it, 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 has, it seems that that it really works uh, removing uh, pathogens. And one important thing in, 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 this, in this world of uh, imabsorption in septic patients would be um, the pursuit of, of uh, an ideal biomarker. We know that this biomarker um, is still elusive, it's, it's very difficult to find, because we cannot pretend to, 
to have one single measure uh, that mm, uh, will tell us uh, how to, to perform the therapy. Probably the, the, mm, the solution to this problem will be to develop a panel of biomarkers that will define the different mm, stages of the septic process. Because mm, in, in every one of, of these uh, stages, we have mm, biomarkers that they are of interest. The problem is that these biomarkers, they are not usually available at hospitals. Mm, they are not, mm, some of them, not, not easy to measure. And of course, they are, they are not cheap. <laughs> so we should think that this, this is one of the, of the, the important targets to, to define before mm, performing uh, some kind of guideline to, to the therapy. And reaching to, to the final of my presentation, the sequential extracorporeal therapy would be some, something very similar or very close to this. Uh, we could, in, in a specific patient, not for all, uh, of course, remove directly the, the pathogens uh, and in certain cases, in, we, we could follow this first therapy uh, by um, an, a, an animal perfusion session uh, uh, trying to, to remove endotoxin uh, from blood. And if it's still uh, in, in you know, this regulation, we could use um, HA series or uh, any other device to reduce uh, the, the cytokine charge in, in blood. And of course, as it has been previously, previously highlighted, we need to define uh, the, the, street, uh, the, the exact population that uh, will benefit most from, from this therapy, when to start, how long should this therapy uh, took place, which biomarker or panel of, of biomarkers uh, would be of interest to use, and uh, start uh, uh, looking for the, the potential side effects. And as a conclusion, the sequential extracorporeal therapy in sepsis will be the use of, of different blood purification techniques at different points of, of the septic process for uh, specific targets. Uh, currently, we have um, a low level of evidence supporting the effectiveness of uh, imodsorption uh, in, in sepsis. But the recent advances in, in understanding inflammation uh, could help us to, to define the, the exact benefits that uh, will help us to, to treat our patients. Of course, we need a global approach to this problem in terms of uh, monitoring with optimal biomarkers. Uh, and we, we should also uh, uh, look for the benefit of uh, reducing endotoxin and cytokines, uh, and in, in certain cases, the direct elimination of pathogens or, or dumps from the blood, and redefine uh, the specific criteria for the usage of this therapy in, in terms of population, uh, what we're looking uh, to remove from, from blood, in what moment, and how we are going to, to perform it and, of course, uh, a careful uh, monitoring about the potential side effects. Thank you very much. <laughs>